Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy Elliott. Today I'm here with my man, Sheriff Lamb. Now this guy's a savage, all right? Number one, you need to follow him. He's absolutely, a, a, uh, I would say, a killer in the game, but, <laughs> but he is because he's a real dude. And you know my language, he's just, he's the leader. And I think in a world right now where everybody's starving for more leaders, this is an unbelievable leader. So if you want to see the podcast of me and Sheriff Lamb, we're going to talk about some cool stuff, why he became a cop, what he's doing. And this guy's just awesome, man. He's killing and he's crushing it. And uh, he's just awesome to be around. So we're here in Scottsdale, Arizona today. You don't want to miss this podcast. Check it out. Searching for greatness in a sea of the dying and shameless. Uh, a sea of the aimless. I don't want to be one of the nameless. I'm going to wake up. All right, guys. So here we are. We're here with Sheriff Lamb. Now, Sheriff, how old are you? I'm 51 years old. 51 years old, looks good. He's just like me, no hair, ready to roll, except he's got a cowboy hat. Now, um, I want to talk to him today. Obviously, I've been following him for a while. Um, he's like, hey, I've been following you, and we live here in Arizona together. And if you guys go look him up uh, on Instagram, is it the American, American Sheriff? American Sheriff on Instagram, yep. Yeah, American like, do, Sheriff. Just do me a favor, just write that down real quick, okay? Because I want you to know who it is that we're talking to today, and I want you to know why I'm really interested in being around him. Um, so in 2023, which is the time I'm shooting this at the end, at the end of the year, we're about to be in 2024. I told my wife at the beginning of this year, I said, my goal is to surround myself with better people. It's always been my goal every year. My wife's like, what do you want this year? And I'm like, I just want to add a, a few more better people. That's all I want to do. Okay. Cause when I'm around proximity of good people, I become a better person. I learn more. I study other individuals and I like that. So I've been studying him. I like the way he talks. I like the way he works. I like the way that he takes care of people. I love that he doesn't sell out, right, for being someone else, for any agenda. He's himself. And I love that. I think that this world needs to, like, really show the world, like, who real leaders are, show people what it looks like because we're men to be right. a man. And then if you were a female, to be just an awesome woman, to just kill it and crush it and be the example for other people for what greatness looks like. We talked about, you know, this is the United States. Like, come on, man. Like, everybody right now watching this should be successful. They should be crushing it. They should be doing something big. So today we hope to inspire you, and we want to bring, like, you know, real content to you that's real shit by people that are doing real things that aren't selling out to um, to other people that honestly don't have anything in store but just talk shit and um, don't care about winning, okay? So we want to win. We want to continue to level up. Um, Sheriff, how old were you when you got into law enforcement? And by the way, tell me maybe about growing up, like, what was that like? Well, brother, thank you, for first of all, for having yeah, no, me here today. I mean, up, honestly, man. this yeah. is awesome. And thanks for the intro. I'm like you. Look, I've been following you for a while because I'm the same way. I want real people. I want people that are not afraid to stand up for what mm. this country was built on, which is strong uh, American values, family, pushing yourself to the, to, to, to the greatness that we were all destined to be here. I got it. You know, I believe this life is about being the best you that you can be. That's it. And we've gotten in this world where everybody's trying to tell you you should be somebody else or something else, or you can be a different sex or whatever you want to be. And I just don't think that's what this world was designed to be. Yeah. I think it's designed to be the greatest you you can be. And I was raised by a, a dad who instilled that on us. You know, he expected that we would be the best that we could be. And, and he held us to a high standard. Yeah. I want to say that. So, so we said he had a dad that held him to a high standard. I just want you to think about something. If, if you guys have children, right, this is even more reason why you want to pay attention during this podcast, because if you don't lead your kids and if you don't show them who they can become, and if you don't become the example for them, then they're not going to follow you and they're not going to know what to become. Yeah. And I really think that a lot of parents now, you know, everybody wants to be successful, but nobody's taking care of their children. Or a lot of people don't realize that everything that they become, their kids are going to become that That's same right. exact thing. So if you're a complainer, your kids are going to complain. If you're a quitter, your kids are going to quit. You know, it's like, it's that. So when you said your dad instilled those values, Absolutely. if you didn't have that, like you need to wake your ass up. And if you're not doing that now, you need to listen to what this guy's saying because that's something that's huge. That's our generation. It is our generation. Look, no success can compensate for failure in the home. Mm -hmm. So you can be as successful as you want if you fail to raise your children to be successful and be better than you. My goal is that my children are better than me. That mm -hmm. shows that I, was, I did my job as a father. And I'm raising men. I'm not afraid to say that I'm raising men that are tough, that, are, that know that life is not all roses and 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 dandelions it is hard it can it it will challenge you especially if you're trying to take a bite out of life it's going to challenge you yeah. and i need my kids to understand that they can get through it push through it they're tough enough 
and uh, that if you want to have success in life, you've got to push hard. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254, 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. Yeah, and adversity is real, right? So like oh, a lot yeah. of people see their, how their parents handle adversity, and we're really sitting on a bunch of weenies Soft. right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, how, how, can, how can kids know how to handle a problem when shit gets hard, when people make fun of them, or, you know, people betray them? If whenever their parents have a problem, you know, they fall apart, they crumble, they quit, they give up on stuff, they go home and bring that crap. Um, you know, I always say this, my job as a, as a leader of my home is to bring good shit to my family, good energy, good fire, good love. You know, I motivate um, our team. I motivate millions of people, but I motivate my family first. My two daughters, they're going to get that from me. My son's going to get that from me. My wife, I'm not going to have her look at me and go, man, I wish I could get some of that, you know, because she sees me giving that to everybody else. I really like that we started this with, hey, you want to do some big stuff in your life? Let's start by taking care of your home, which is becoming a great person in your home. And I love what you said. What was that you said? Um, no success can no compensate. success can compensate for failure in the home. Yeah, so like, doesn't matter how much money you make if you're not taking care of your house, you're failing. You know how many people we see out there that are successful financially and they've they've hit the careers that they want to hit, but they're raising soft children, mm. and those children don't understand that life is not easy. Yeah, and that. They don't. They're not going to get everything they want. You're not going to be able to buy the house that your parents have now because they've they've worked a long time for that, and so we've created this soft society. Proof positive is a lot of people don't want to get into law enforcement. A lot of people don't want to get into um, the military right now. Um, they just don't. We've raised a soft generation, and we're going to pay for that. Yeah. And so I think it's important. My message to families and dads is: first of all, stay stay in your kids' lives. Don't don't have a kid and then have run off. You know, they need fathers. They need mothers. They yeah. need both. And so where, in, where possible, keep the family intact and then be a father to those kids and teach them and make sure that they understand what life is going to bring at them, the good and the bad, and make sure that you support them. You know, like I think most parents, I do, a, 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 I know we didn't, I didn't even answer your first question, but. Uh, um, no, no, we'll, we'll get there. I did a, you, I, I, when I became a sheriff, I was like, man. I got to do something to help these kids. Mm -hmm. You know, we had kids going and getting charged with possession of marijuana or a fight at a school mm -hmm. or whatever. And I just didn't think that they deserved a, a criminal record for those things. And I, and they were kids. They're learning how to, to navigate life. They make mistakes. We yes. all make mistakes. Yeah. And so I went to the county attorney and I said, hey, look, I want to come up with a, a program that I think will help these kids. And I said, if you give me some latitude, let me run with it. And let me figure it out. So I went to California, looked at a program out there in Watsonville, California, went to a few other places, came back to the county attorney and said, I know what I want. I want to call it the Sheriff's Youth Redirection Program. Oh, that's and great. what it would do is intercept them before they ever went to the county attorney or the court. It stops right with me at the sheriff's office. And I personally would go and teach those classes. And I did four classes. And I would tell the parents, this is not punitive in nature. I'm not here to punish your kids. I'm here to show your kids their greatness. I'm here to drag out of them what they are capable of. And I that's my goal is for them to understand that. That's awesome. And man. so that's we crazy. we do goal setting and planning. We talk about digital media, social media, sexting, the good and the bad of the yeah. dangers of it. Mm -hmm. We talk about drugs and alcohol. You're, ed you're educating them. We're educating them. And then good, we do a career yeah. night, which Having people like you or I've had people that have served 20 years in prison that have come in. I've had politicians. I've had military recruiters. We bring different people in to talk to these That's kids amazing. about their possibilities. I've had over 200 kids go through the program. I've had five reoffend, And these kids, what they understand is they start to see their greatness. Somebody else sees in them the greatness in them as opposed to focusing on their mistakes they're making yeah because we're focused yeah, on that's the deal i was about to say because dude when i do something bad i feel shame yeah and then i put my head down and then i everybody else like looks at me like i'm an outcast right and at the end of the day um i need someone to believe in me because if you don't believe in me and i don't believe in me well then no one's going to believe in me and i'm just going to keep doing bad stuff and i don't want to but i i want attention you All nailed it. And that was one of the things that we had to overcome is I went to the county. I started two things are happening. One, when they make a mistake, they think they're a bad kid mm -hmm. and they feel bad about themselves. And so the next bad decision becomes easier or 
they think the cops are the bad guys. And we're not the bad guys. We want them to succeed. And we're here to help them succeed. And we wanted them to know, like, all perspective. you made a mistake. Yeah. Like, you can't change it. I tell the kids the first day, I go, I don't care why you're here. And they look at that kind of funny. I, I, don't get me wrong. I care for you. I don't care why you're here because I can't change it. You can't change it. And your parents can't change it. So why are we focused on that? I don't know if you watch the show Vikings. Yeah, I love it. Vikings is awesome. But one of my favorite scene from Vikings ever, and there's a lot of good ones, is when his two boys that are twins are old enough to go to battle with them and go out and pillage and and leave with the Vikings. Mm -hmm. And they're probably eight to ten, you know. And um, they get in the boat and they're leaving shore. And, you know, Ragnar's looking forward. And his two kids are on the back of the boat with looking back towards the shore, towards their mom and towards safety. Mm-hmm. And he just says, without even looking back, he just says, uh, he says, don't waste your time looking back. We're not going that direction. And it was that. so true. It's like, what do you waste your time looking back? You're not going that direction. That's it. And so we try to focus on, we get the kids focused on fo- the, the future, uh, focused on now. Mm-hmm. And we try to tell my kids in life, you know, like focus on what's out there, what you're doing today, make a difference and challenge yourself to be better. And so I've, that's one of the most things I'm most proud of as a sheriff is taking that and seeing how it has impacted kids. I've seen them years later where they've come up to me and said, Sheriff, because of you, my kid went into the military or I've had the kids come up and say, I was one of your kids in your U3 direction class. Yeah. And I wanted to say thank you. You changed my life, changed the course of my life. So that's one of the things I'm proud of. But I try to do that in my own home. And for any of you out there, if you have kids, make sure you take care of your kids first. Yeah, that's it. And, and when you do that, not only will you be proud, like you said, you know, like that, that makes you proud. Like you're proud. Like how many people are alive right now? but they're not doing anything that they're proud of, right? Um, So make sure that you're doing a good job in your home. You're proud of that. And then outside of that, I remember there was a day where people had leaders and mentors and they went around and they tried to help other people believe in themselves and they gave. And that's kind of where we're starting this new era. I believe in the way that we influence people is that we're building more leaders, right? Like our goal is to live by the example, not have double standards. You know, hey, I don't give a shit what you've done. I've done a lot of shit wrong. I've made so many mistakes, but that just makes you more qualified to be a leader because you understand what other people are going through you know like if i'm going to follow a leader i want to follow somebody that made a lot of mistakes somebody that did all the bad stuff somebody that understands everything so that when they're trying to help me no matter what slump i fall in they can pull me out because i do been there done that i know exactly what you're going through i don't want some person and that's why i tell you a lot of people have made mistakes but they don't see that they could be this great leader and i'm here to tell you that all of you can you can be anything you want um, but you got to start caring and i think you got to take care of yourself so you're 51 years old yep. right um clearly you're in great shape okay every day you're out doing um your police work which is like you know from you might be chasing somebody down <laughs> or working out or doing whatever and running crazy and i know that you're running for senate this year so you're going absolutely beast mode by the way whenever it's time to vote for him this this year if you're in Arizona sheriff land for senate.com that's yep. it yep period that's it he's the Love man it. um but but also on top of that you know you take care of your family you got a lot of kids and um you know your mental health is on point your energy is awesome I mean guys I'm 44 he's 51 you guys know the energy I carry he carries the same energy I told you guys to go to Instagram and literally look up the American sheriff make sure you follow him but look at the way he talks to people look at the love that he has look at the, his eyes look at the way that he's speaking look at the way he cares you know, if we could just emulate that and then we could just take that into whatever we're doing in life. I mean, oh, my God, man. Like, dude, your life will be amazing. And then just don't quit. And I guarantee in two years, one year, two years, you're going to look up. And you're going to have a life that nobody will believe you could ever had. And also you impact a lot of people's lives, which I think as you've gotten older, right? Like you don't join the police force to make money, no. right? Like, I no. mean, you get paid, but like you don't join, you know, and, and it's a good career, but it's not going to make you a millionaire. Right. No. Right. People aren't like, man, I want to be a millionaire. I'm going to go join, you know, no, you do it because you want to serve other people. And we got this, uh, we got this way that people look at, you know, law enforcement now that absolutely disgusts me. And me too. Right. You know, and, and by the way, at the end of the day, if, you know, if your job was to go out there and when people call 911 or they have a problem or there's bad people, you know, these people are going to go take care of these situations and you guys aren't grateful for that. 
Like, that's the craziest shit I've ever seen in my life. I am a stalwart defender and supporter of this profession. Number one, I think it's the most important profession to our republic. The founding fathers knew it when they established it. The very first charge of the Constitution is found in the preamble, not the Bill of Rights, not the Articles. When they said, we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice. Mm -hmm. They knew how important justice was. Because the men are not perfect. Men make mistakes. And so time. you need a justice system. You need a rule of law. And so I believe in the rule of law and I defend it. Going to your point, the average police officer in their life, will, in their career, will experience anywhere between 400 and 700 traumatic incidences that they have to deal with. That's crazy. The average citizen only experiences two to four in their lifetime. Damn. And we're doing 400 to 700. And going to your point, if you're not mentally and physically in shape, it will wear on you, which is why um, suicide amongst law enforcement and military is high. Because for one, you, when you lose your brotherhood, that hurts. But two, we see stuff that the average person shouldn't see. Yeah. And yeah, I can't I've been, imagine. You know, I'm running for Senate. And this is not the Senate ploy. But when I go around and talk to people, I said, look, if your house was on fire or if you were um, you had thieves in your house, or which we do, the government, yeah. <laughs> or if you had a domestic situation going on where mom and dad can't get along, you're not going to call a politician. You're going to call your sheriff That's or right. the cops. Why? We are trained in experience in restoring balance and order to chaos. That's that right. is what we do. You call me, I'm expected to show up to your house, and I am expected in minutes to start to restore balance and order into whatever call I'm, I'm, I'm responding That's to. Right. And so if I'm not in a place where I can restore balance and order, how can I ever expect to do it? You know, we have a saying in SWAT, and I know you guys will, you'll, you, you believe this too, and you probably say it, is you will not rise to the occasion. Yep. You will only rise to the highest level of your training. That's it. If you have failed to read books and educate yourself, if you have failed to be a master of your craft, yep. if you have failed to physically put yourself in a position of a, an advantage position, then you're not going to rise to the occasion. When That's the time it. comes, you will get as high as you you took yourself. Yep. And so for, challenge right. yourself, please. It's it's it, it's painful. It's uncomfortable. But that is where all the good stuff in life is, is living in that uncomfortable zone and pushing yourself. We're, we're capable of so much. If yeah. the average human understood what just what we are capable of and you're going to have these trolls that don't challenge themselves get on and, and post hateful comments because they're not doing anything in their own lives. Yeah, I think a lot of people, they, they honestly don't um, they, they don't like a lot of people because they don't like themselves. That's it. You know, anytime um, I re and I'm going to say this because I think there was a time in my life where I was a, a hater. And I hate to say that, but I was a hater because there was a guy that I went to school with that took some risks and he created a really good life. And I was kind of like, dude, screw that guy. You know, and I realized that I was like, screw, screw this. I, I don't like me. That guy took a, he was not better than me. He was not more talented than me. And he took a risk on himself and he bet against himself at a young age. And he ended up creating some really success, a uh, big success, bigger than mine when I was younger. And I thought, dude, that's some bullshit, man. Like that guy, that's not really who he is. It, it wasn't who he was. He had changed. He had become better. But I was thinking about the old him, and the old him didn't deserve that. But he had been doing the training. He had been doing the learning. And I was watching that. And I really looked, and I go, dude, you know what? That actually, that guy is a badass. That guy is a stud. That guy did the work. That guy, he thought bigger than me. He had a better abundance mindset than me. And here I am talking shit on this guy because he could do something that I could do too, but he did it and I didn't. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, I'm a freaking loser. <laughs> and at that point, you know, I always say the person that can self-correct is forever wealthy. Like you got to self-correct. You do. And, and, you know, so like to be a leader is like self-leadership, which is like self-awareness and like self-mastery. Yeah. And I looked in the mirror and I was like, dude, I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> and, and I, I literally started to take risks just like that guy took, started to read the book, started to do the training, um, took my TV off the wall, put up a whiteboard, started to write down goals. You know, all the things that every person goes through in the beginning of a successful journey. 
And dude, next thing you know, I looked up, man, like two years down the road, I was like smoking that dude now and I'm killing it. And I'm like, damn, man, the secret is just investing in yourself, doing the work yeah. and, and the physical side. We always talk a lot about it a lot. Um, it's really important to get you on edge. I know that you're in great shape at 51. I think anybody watching this, you got to take care of your physical condition because you can't be mentally strong. You're not going to overcome adversity. You're not going to see like any... Anytime, you know, you get test days. Like, I know this. Like, being a police officer, like, I get test days as being a businessman, but you're a businessman and a police officer. And a politician. And a politician. That's like fucking triple twist. I don't like to say I'm a politician. I'm a more a public servant. But, yeah. yes, I have to go out and deal with people. But you're tested people. every day. Oh, yeah. Every day, someone's trying to fuck you. Mm -hmm. Every day, somebody's trying to stab you in the back. Every day, there's an unexpected problem. And every day, there's a whole bunch of people that are counting on you. Plus, you're trying to help all these people and try to build your own life. And take care of your family. Yeah. Right? Those are all tests. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now. 918-210-0254. 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. Right. And people look at you and I, and they, I, I get it all the time. They're going to look at you. Anybody successful, they're going to look and go, well, they've had it easy. No, dude, I, feel I, like have, I, was... I have lost everything. I've had bankruptcies. I've lost vehicles. I've lost businesses. I've lost everything. And you know what? I kept going. Yeah. I kept pushing. I kept challenging myself. I didn't let those things define me. Yes, they, they suck. You know, I've lost last December. I could have easily have just said, I'm done. I, last December 16th, I got a knock at the door at 830 at night. And my wife had been wrapping presents. I'd been out to a dinner and I'd been wrapping, so, you know, been doing some Christmas shopping. I get home about eight o'clock, about 830, get a knock on the door. And it's the sheriff from the neighboring county with two of my chiefs and two guys from Gilbert PD. And one of the chiefs has known my five kids. I got five kids since they were little. My middle one's name is Cooper. And he had an 11 month old granddaughter or a daughter, my granddaughter and a, and a fiance. And um, I opened the door and you can immediately tell something's wrong. And all he could say was he just looked at me and said, Cooper and the baby are dead. You know, in a flash, I lost my my 22 uh, year old son, my 11 month old granddaughter and my soon to be daughter in law. And I could have easily have just sat there and said, I'm done. Like life's too hard. Mm. Um, but I have four other kids. And I have a company, I have an agency with over 600 employees. I have a county of 500,000 people that is watching. And they want to see if the leader is going to get up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the success I've had is because I've managed to find ways to push through things like that and find the good in it. I am not a negative person. So everything that happens to me, I'll be like, you know what the good thing about that is? The good thing is blah, 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 blah. Why? Because I've chosen to look at life differently. Um, and I'm going to tell you, I'll tell you three things when you're ready. But I, one of those things is important that I tell the kids when I teach those kids in that class. And um, I had to live the things that I teach these kids. And I will tell you, nothing comes easy. If you are new levels, bring on new devils. Mm -hmm. If you are challenging yourself, I'll let me be the, let me just tell you right up front and kill the suspense. You are going to go through hell. Um, I guarantee you, I, if I, you told me all the things you've gone through hell to get here, but that's what it takes to get to that next level. Yep. And the average person gets scared when they stare down the barrel of the gun and they chose not to do it. And, um, I've chosen to constantly try to better myself and take bigger risk and bigger chances, get in the arena with the bigger and stronger person. That's what you find out what you're made of. And that's where you find out what you were sent here to this earth to do. I, uh, one of the things I tell the kids, the very first thing is be authentic, be who you are. Like we talk about changing. It's okay to change your, your discipline, your lifestyle, your be who you are, but don't be afraid to change. So many people are like, you better not change when you become successful. No, you should change. Yeah. Don't change you, but change your lifestyle, your discipline, your focus, your goals, your change, all that. You have to be authentic. Everybody in this world has different fingerprints, different DNA, different irises, which is your most unique thing about you. There is not a single person in this world 
that is like you. Not one amongst billions of people. If that doesn't tell you the godliness and the majesticness of your purpose here on this earth, then I don't know what to tell you. And I get it. And I try to instill this upon my kids and upon other kids that I teach. Your purpose here on this, this earth is beyond your wildest imagination. And so you, it's your job to try to find that and strive to get to that authenticity and greatness. Um, nobody was sent here to be small. Nobody was sent here to fail. Nobody was sent here to wallow in self-pity. You were sent here to be great. And so being authentic is the very first thing you have to understand is, especially in an age of social media and everybody wants to try to be like somebody else mm -hmm. or society's telling you, yeah, you're right. You aren't good the way you are. You should be this mm -hmm. or that. No, you are exactly who you are. Mm -hmm. And you are by purpose, by design, and you are a one of a kind in this world. And to me, that is, is one of the most valuable things to understand is, is your authenticity, especially if you want to be successful. Um, and, the, and the people that are struggling, it's because they haven't embraced their authenticity. They haven't embraced it. When it gets painful, it's life's way of dragging that out of you. Mm -hmm. Dragging what only you have to give to this world out of you. And so it's our job to figure that out. That's crazy shit, man. That's nuts. And I'm so, super sorry about your son. I can't even imagine that. You no, know, I appreciate it. I was telling my wife, um, we were talking about stress, stress testing, mm -hmm. um, just the other day. Um, stress testing your marriage, stress testing your, uh, your, yourself, uh, stress testing your company. Um, you train for these times of the most hell, chaos, craziness, and just unimaginable things that can happen. And most people don't train for them and they don't get ready for them and they don't embrace tests and, and say, man, at the end of the day, you know, like, like number one, like when I know I'm having a test day, I wake up, I feel like I'm getting sick. I might know, dude, I'm going to the gym right now. Like yeah. I'm going to get up like, Hey, or maybe I'm super tired. I'm like, wait a minute. Like if I'm going to sleep in a day, it's not this day. Like I need to get up this day and I need to prove to myself that I'm going to fucking crush this day. I need to do this for me. And I'm the only one experiencing this. No one else knows I'm going through it. It's just a relationship that I have with myself. I'm like, I'm going to bring more energy. I'm going to have a better attitude. I'm going to smile more. I'm going to give more. I'm going to put up, uh, you know, bigger numbers. I'm going to do, I'm going to do that today. Now, tomorrow I may take off, right? And I'll wake up and feel good. And I'm, I'm okay with that, but I'm not going to fucking do it today yeah. because today, if I give in when I don't feel good, then that's me going down instead of going up. So I, I, I say you got to identify these test days and then you lean into them. And really at the end of the day, um, every time I have one of these, a crazy hell day, um, at the end of the day, I like have this like euphoric moment yeah. where I'm like, damn, man, like, dude, I almost wish it was harder. <laughs> right. Cause like, I, like, I just, I own that shit today and no one knows about it. It's just a personal relationship I have with myself. And then I'm like, dude, I am fucking built for this shit. Yeah. You know, so the next time something hard comes, I'm like, oh, this is one of those days. Okay, cool. Well, we know what we do on these days. But when you practice with those days in the event that there's a death or something happens, if you're not embracing those test days, people get divorced, they go bankrupt, they lose everything, and they physically crash and fall apart. I know this, if I was to die and I go to heaven, I'm sitting there and I'm praying that my family is gonna be strong as hell. Mm -hmm. If I watched them crumble because I died, then honestly, I would be fucking heartbroken. I'd be like, no ways, yeah. man. Like me dying, like I ruined my whole That's family's really life. Good. Like no ways, like I don't want that. So I think your son would be really proud of you Thank knowing you. that, you know, you're standing firm, you're standing strong and you know, um, you obviously you're gonna be with them soon and your whole family will be. Yeah. So. And that was a big reason why we jumped into the Senate race. It was almost like my son saying, no, like you can do this. This is, this is the test. And, and look, as a law enforcement guy, we go, that's what you're, when you start and you go through the academy, it's like what we were talking about earlier. When people walk into your training room, you, you lay the groundwork of, look, I want to see you succeed. I love you. 
but we're going to get real. Yeah. And we're going to stress inoculate you. Yes. And you need to be stress inoculated and pressure the hell out of them. In law enforcement, in the academy, we pressure you. And then we put you on pressure when you get out of the academy. Why? Not for you to fail, but we know the pressures that will come to you in this profession. And so you need to be prepared and we want to inoculate you to that stress. And you're, when you stress somebody, you're actually doing them a favor because you're, you're creating a tougher, harder uh, a person that's going to be more capable of dealing with life uh, than, than if you just let you know, them be soft. Well, and, especially people are calling you when they're afraid and they're yeah. scared. And what if I show up and I'm scared? Yeah, right? I was about to say, you, you, it's like going into a fight. You can't think that you're going to get knocked out for a second. You got to be like, dude, I'm going to yeah. knock this dude out. Or if you're going to wrestle someone, you can't think, well, man, I wonder if this person's going to beat me. Dude, you're going to get beat. Like, so like a police officer is going into unknown situations, which are truly unknown. And I mean, like, there's no, <laughs> when someone calls 911, you don't know what the fuck's going on. There's no script that says it's going to go this way, this way, this way, this way. Yeah, there's no blueprint. No. There's everything you've trained for and you train for the nastiest and the worst. And if you got lucky and it was easy, that's fine. But you never know, man. I, you know, I think about how many times you guys walk up to cars where people are speeding even. Just simple, everyday stuff. And some dude, you don't know if he's a bad person. And, you know, he, you don't know what he knows. And, you know, he's like, you know, you don't know, man. You yeah. don't know anything. You know, you don't know going into a house when it's a setup. It's a trap. It's this. You know, and, and that's why people, you know, I love what you said in the beginning. You said police officers go through 400 to 700 traumatic experiences in their life. And the normal person goes through two or four, you know, the more nor, most people, 99.9% of the world that go through two or four, dude, they're complaining they're about done. those things right now. I mean, for years, they're still talking people like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that happened. I know that three years ago that happened to you. I know it. Listen to me. We'll do counseling. You guys fucking deal with that every fucking month. every day. Yeah. It's like, it's funny. You should say the counseling because. My wife and I were talking yesterday, and we're, we've got. It's like you, know, you have no time to even reset. You're I go back in another crazy situation. I told my wife, I go, we don't get that. We yeah. have to just push. We are we're at that level where yeah, you can't. Quit. Nobody's out there going, hey, can I talk to you? Um, let me help. Like I, I'm I'm the guy that has to make sure that everybody else is okay. Yeah. And so if you want to get to that level, then you have to become completely stress inoculated, and you've got to be able to deal with everything that life's going to throw at you and more and being a cop prepares you for that because there it tells you that you can't control things that's another one of the things so my one thing is be authentic authentic. my second thing is don't be afraid to do the uncomfortable work Mm. everything good in this life comes through uncomfortable work getting yourself outside of your comfort zone if you are in a job and you just love where you're at in life i'm telling you right now Find something, find something to get you out of your comfort zone. Go do in jujitsu. Do something that's going to make you uncomfortable, mm-hmm. because that's where all the gold and the jewels. I always talk about Gold Rush, the movie, you know, they'll or the show. Mm-hmm. They'll just fill a room full of dirt, and they'll process it and spend a whole week. I mean, a huge gymnasium full of dirt. And at the end, if they're lucky, they'll have a, this much gold. And you might say that's not worth all that work, but it is. The value of this is worth it. Mm-hmm. So not only is the is is the, the 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 real gold, the money, and everything at the end of the uncomfortable work, your personal growth yeah, your and your character. own greatness is at the end of the uncomfortable work. So be authentic. Don't be, be afraid to do the uncomfortable work. But the third one is probably the most important, and this is what we have to learn: surrender the outcome. Mm. Because in the end, the only thing you can control is your attitude. And your work output. Everything else is outside of your control. And most people who are depressed or angry or feel anxiety or unhappiness in this world is because you are trying to control an outcome that you have no control over. Take it from me, the cop for almost two decades. Life, the, the, the craziest things can happen completely out of your control. I couldn't control. I wear a gun. I pull people over for DUI. I could not stop the car that was DUI the day that killed my kids. So I can sit and wallow in that, or I can say to myself, I couldn't control that outcome. Mm -hmm. But what I can control is what is my attitude going to be moving forward and what is my work output going to be? And if you can learn to surrender the outcome in life, you will be successful. And let life take you where it's trying to take you. 
Life is trying to open doors and we fight life and we fight success because it's uncomfortable. But I will promise you, if you learn to just take those chances and surrender the outcome, you will watch your life will change dramatically. Mm -hmm. Um, Even if the circumstances don't change, your attitude alone will change your life dramatically. But I promise you, life has a way of rewarding those things and you will see your whole entire professional life change for the better. All of these things will change for the better. And you'll find that the things that would knock everybody else off their pedestal Mm -hmm. and probably for good will be literally speed bumps for you. Um, And you'll, you'll see the good in all of those things. So so be authentic. Don't be afraid to do the uncomfortable work and surrender the outcome. That's badass stuff, man. That's badass. And I'll say one last thing. Um, when you get betrayed or, you know, something really bad happens and, you know, you've, I'm not going to say pretended to be someone for a long time, but you've been, you know, like saying, this is who I am. I'm a good leader. You know, like I'm great to people when that day happens and it's the worst day of your life, everybody's watching and waiting and saying, all right, all right, now, now we're going to really see who this guy is. I got betrayed by a guy and, um, you know, I remember when it happened, I was thinking there's two ways you can go here. Number one, you can get pissed off. You can get fucking really mad at everybody and you can become a piece of shit. Mm -hmm. You can start playing the victim. You can change who you are. Your heart can get dark. You can go cold or you can love harder. You can be better. You can give more. You can be a more generous person. And matter of fact, Just fucking part of life. Shit happens. But you know what? I'm not going to sell out. I'm not going to fucking change and become one of these people that everybody said that I was stupid my whole life for trying to be this way and I needed to become that kind of person. No, fuck everybody. I'm going to stay exactly who I am. I'm going to love everybody harder. I'm going to be better to everyone. I'm going to care more. And I'm going to keep fucking giving. And at the end of the day, if I get my heart crushed again, I'm totally cool with it. But I'm not going to fucking sell out and I'm going to stay exactly who I want to be and you staying true to who you've been telling people and all these kids and everybody when this, you know, strike happened with your family, you're like, damn, you know, okay. Now I, I've got, now I've got four kids. I got to take care of. Now I've got my wife. Now I've got everybody. Now I've got, I've got me like, dude, what the fuck? Like yeah. I can either fall apart. Okay. And then let everybody down or I can physically rise to the occasion and I can say, Hey man, I can't control this. But you know what I can control is the way that I respond to this. And I can prove to everybody else that you guys are going to have something like this happen in your life also. Okay. But I'm going to be an example of how to, you know, to go through this. You know what I mean? Yeah. And not tear other people down. Because, dude, seriously, like hurt people hurt people. That's it. Okay. Or your wounds can be your weapons. It's just a, I have a yeah. shirt that I wear all the time that says scars. Yeah. It's a ape man strong. Eight man strong, a bunch of good dudes out here that live here in Arizona. Um, but they, um, it just says scars. Yeah. And I love it because everybody's got them. Mm. Everybody's got scars. Some are physical, some are emotional, some are mental. But those scars are your way of telling life whatever it was that tried to take you out wasn't strong enough. That's right. And, and look, I'm in politics. You want to talk about being betrayed? This is the name of the game in politics. I know your shit's crazy. And it is, these people will betray you all the time. And if you try to constantly figure out who you need to go after and all that, because they tried to tell me all the time, you need to be negative. You need to be negative. I said, no, no, that's not me. Sell out. My wife has the best saying. When you deal with haters and you deal with all, because I get them, haters, I get all these things. And, and when you stand up for what's right, I promise you, the haters will be even, whew. Yeah. Like I got, the government tried to tell me that I'm, when I'm wrong. So you get haters to a, a whole nother level. you turn level. A, a wrong into a right, People fucking don't they, like that. They don't like it. But my yeah. wife has the best saying. She goes, Mark, we're just going to continue to bury everybody in an avalanche of love and light. Hey, that's good shit. That's and, what I'm talking about. And dude. what we do is we go out and we smile and we treat everybody with kindness and respect. Because if a lion's walking, that lion doesn't care two craps about anything else that's going on around him. He has one focus, and that's to take care of his pride and to be the king of the jungle. That's it. He doesn't get bothered about an anthill on the side of the thing. No. Whether, and they're mad because he stepped on their anthill. He doesn't care. What does he do? He stays focused on what he has to do. And 
as a leader, my job is to stay focused on what I have to do. Yeah. As a as a person that wants to serve other people, my job is to stay focused. And the way I have uh, I lead is through example and through burying people in an avalanche of love and light mm -hmm. through understanding and saying, look, yeah, you made a mistake, but you're good. Or you're better than this yeah. and we can be better. Yeah. And um, there's very few unredeemable people and things in this world. I totally agree. And yeah. sometimes you got to go through shit because you had a bad example. But once you go through it or, or maybe you're just an idiot. You know what I'm saying? But then something happens. And, dude, I always say it's from today forward. I don't care about who you were. I care about who you're becoming. That's right. It's all that matters. That's it. Yeah, so anybody watching this, um, dude, We didn't even one, get into any of the other stuff. We'll have I don't to come really back. Don't give and a shit. We'll do 20 <laughs> of these. Um, but the biggest thing is is uh, Sheriff Lamb. Make sure you guys go follow him on Instagram, American Sheriff. He's super cool. You know, I don't see law enforcement build up big social media platforms, but I remember I was I was watching, I think you're, you know, three or 400,000 followers on Instagram, and I'm like, dude, this guy's kicking ass, man. I mean, you know, he's doing a lot of stuff in real life, killing it, crushing it. He's also a great person. Leaders are influential. So he's he's been building this following. Um, you guys need And I was a marketer before. Yeah. Like, so I was in marketing before and sales, and so... I came into this and said, why is nobody doing this? Yeah. And we market and brand our agency. So that's, that's yeah, and why. He, and, so. and, but that's his brand. His brand is him. You know what I'm saying? It's everything that he does, the way he loves his family, the way he takes care of his team, you know, who he is in life, what he stands for, his core values, his standards. It's just super cool, man. So I love having people that are around me um, that believe like this. And you guys need them too, okay? So make sure that you guys go follow uh, American Sheriff on Instagram. And uh, make sure that we vote for you coming yeah. up later. And I look year. forward to getting you on a ride-along, brother. Oh, yeah. Hey, I'm yeah. going on a ride-along. You guys will see that one next. Hopefully it's uh, fucking the craziest It'll day It'll be crazy. Ever. We'll make it good. <laughs> All right, guys. Much love. Have a blessed day. We'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, I just want to tell you, you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.